Growing up in the late 70s and early 80s, there was one television show we all loved, Star Blazers. But sadly, when we went to the toy stores, we couldn't find toys based on the show, at least in the U.S. However, if you lived in Japan, you got a slew of them in 1978. Let's take a look. Welcome back to the Junk Room, everybody. It's me, the Junk Man, coming at you with a new video. Let's go back to 1979 when us kids got introduced to a whole new type of cartoon called Star Blazers. Of course, over in Japan, it was called Battleship Amato. Hope I said that right. It also went by another name. Not even going to try to pronounce it because if you watch my channel, you know I can't pronounce a lot of stuff. So for this video, I'm always going to refer to it as Star Blazers. But for this video, I'm going to keep calling it Star Blazers. It was released in the U.S. in 1979. And this was our introduction, or most of us, introduction to Japanese animation cartoons. Sure, maybe you had the Speed Racer before that or around the same time, but this really introduced us to the world of anime. And this was unlike any cartoon we had at the time, as it was a continuing storyline. Sure, our parents watched Young and the Restless, As the World Turns, got in like soap operas, so we were used to that. But this was like our soap. We had a continuing storyline of having to defend Mother Earth. We're off to outer space. We're leaving Mother Earth to save the human race. Our Star Blazers. Unlike any other cartoon at that time, at least that I can think of, you didn't have to watch every episode. Even with something like He-Man a few years later, you could just pop it on at any time. They might have been an overall story theme, but it wasn't an overall story arch. But with Star Blazers, you had that arch. Fighting with the Gamelons, we won't stop until we've won. Then we'll return, and when we arrive, the Earth will survive with our Star Blazers. And sadly, as a kid, at least in the U.S., we didn't have any toys based on the show. And that kind of bummed us out. I mean, we had a lot of Star Wars toys, but kids really into this cartoon, you couldn't really show your love for it. Not only was there no toys, there was no t-shirts, no posters. It was very rare, at least to a normal store like Walmart or your normal chain store that most kids went to, you didn't see anything related to Star Blazers. And one thing we always wanted was action figures. Now, I did a video last week about TV shows that we should have got action figures of. And I said I didn't have Star Blazers action figures. I meant we didn't have them in the U.S. Someone commented and reminded me that we did get Star Blazers action figures. At least Japan did. And that set off a memory that I forgot all about. I remember seeing some of these at a toy show back in the mid-90s, being in shock that they were Star Blazers. At first, I thought maybe they were custom figures, but then to find out, they got released. But you don't really hear much about the Star Blazers toys. Now, before we look at the action figures from the line, let's look at some other things that did get released in 1978. Because there was more than just figures. There were models, die-cast ships, a lot of stuff. But we're not going to look at everything. We're just going to look at a few and then dig into the action figures. But as always, before we get started, if you'd like to become a member of the channel, become a YouTube member or a Patreon member. And there you get exclusive contents, outtakes, some other things, commentary, some other things there. And it really helps support the channel. And as always, you can buy a shirt like this one right here. Now let's get on to it and talk about the Star Blazers merchandise. Again, most of these came out in 1978, and one of the best was a die-cast ship of the battleship. Most of the toys were released in 1978, and as you can see here, we got a die-cast of the battleship. This was 8 inches long and fully detailed and made of solid metal. It felt like you were holding the real ship, but sized down. And it wasn't just a model to look at, it did come with pop-out wings an opening hatch door, and full color space panel backdrop. That thing would look good sitting on the junk room shelf, uh, or anyone's toy shelf for that matter. But it wasn't just the battleship we got. Remember the, I guess it was in space, but I always call it the aircraft carrier because that's what it looked like. The Cosmo Tiger II was seven inches and also made of solid metal with spring launching missiles. They didn't care anything about choking the kid with a missile. Either that or kids in Japan were smart enough to know 
you don't put a missile in your mouth and hit a firing button. But what about kids that wanted more of a live action play? They didn't want to just play with the toys or have a model sitting on a desk. They wanted to act like their favorite Star Blazer. For them, they had the Cosmo Gun, also released in 1978. This gun would light up and buzz, but it also came with a free pin of the battleship. So we got the DACAS ships, we got the gun so you can play it around the house, but what kids really wanted in 1978 was action figures. Star Blazers action figures. And if you're a little kid in Japan, you got one. I'm so jealous. Now these were soft vinyl, but they did have moving joints at the arm and at the waist. So let's take a look at them. Although these are more of a rubber soft vinyl figure, and not a plastic action figure, they still look amazing. There were five figures. There was Windstar, Venture. There was also Nova, Captain Avatar, and Dizlock, who came with a cloth cape. The figures were just under four inches tall, making them about the same size as the Star Wars action figures. And again, they did have movable joints in the arms and the waist. Around this same time, they also released Analyzer, a little wind-up toy uh, the droid from the show, or robot, or whatever they called it. And this was about the same size as the wind-up, all not officially part of the same figure line. It fits right in with them. Do you really count these as action figures? They were soft vinyl. Kids wanted action figures in 1978, like the Star Wars figures. Plastic. And yes, they got them in Japan. With the success of Star Wars, Nomura, I hope I said that right, the toy company in Japan, had the rights for most of the Star Blazers merchandise. They made the ones we looked at so far, and they also made the action figure line. And these figures were just a little shorter than the Star Wars figures, 3.3 inches tall. And best of all, they were made of plastic. The characters in this line were the same ones released in the soft line, but these had joints at the knees, arms, head, and hips. And they're very well detailed and great looking figures. Each one came sold in its own little case, making it look great for collectors who don't even want to open the figure. But when it comes to action figures, they need a home. They need something to play in. They need a playset. Don't worry. Yeah, there was a Star Blazers playset of the Battleship Bridge. The Amato Bridge playset. By looking at the photos, you might think it's just a plastic backdrop, something to stand your figures on. Well, there's more than meets the eye. It comes with movable seats, a light-up control panel, interchangeable backdrops, and sound effects to let your action figures yell out. Video panel switch on, your motto launch, and six other phrases. Man, don't these look great? If I knew about these as a kid, I would have snuck on an airplane and went over to Japan and bought me a whole box full of them. They look really great. Sadly, they're hard to find now. They have hardly ever turn up on sites like eBay or second-hand sites. And when they do, they go for a few hundred dollars. Even the soft final ones are pretty hard to find. Now, there was other merchandise released around 1978. I mean, you had some rubber gummy figures, puzzles, more models. So we're not gonna look at everything there because it would just take all day. And I just wanted really to focus on these action figures. And as the collector market grew, other companies in the late 90s and early 2000s have made other Star Blazers merchandise. But when it comes to toys that were made for kids to play with during the time of the show, this was it. 1978, the action figure line. Two different action figure lines. And while researching this video, I found a badass jacket on eBay that I think would look really good if I wore it in every video. Check it out. Yeah, a Star Blazers jacket. Man, this thing looks awesome. Well, that's a look at the Star Blazers action figure line. And I'm sorry I don't remember the guy that triggered my memory into these that I forgot about. I would give you a shout out, but I really can't remember who it was. So, sorry about that. But thanks for making me remember something I forgot all about. So, what did you think about these figures? Were you a fan of Star Blazers? If so, would you have loved these action figures? I know I would have. Let me know all that and more in the comments below. And as always... Thumb up so I know you like my content. Subscribe to the channel, and we'll be back again soon. Hey, jump that <laughs> channel popping, though. Thank you, sir, for that unsolicited testimony.